Hello again, uh, Mr. Parker here, and today we're going to be looking at the first segment of several segments of the cell unit, um, which uh, we're going to be exploring here, the cellular basis of life, as you can see here on the screen. Um, today we're going to talk about, real brief in this segment, about the, some of, uh, about the cell theory, some of the famous scientists that um, dealt with the cell theory or had contributed to the cell theory, some information to it, um, why is the cell theory so important, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, cell size, um, and we'll actually revisit cell size a little bit more in class doing a lab looking at uh, the cell size. And then we'll be looking at a little bit about the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Okay, so what you can see on the screen here is we have two different types of cells. All right, we have our prokaryotic cell, okay, which is what kind of means the before um, type of cell. And you guys have done your uh, little research on the different terms. And then you have eukaryotic cell, which is more of your um, advanced type of cell, a little more complex. Uh, these are a little bit usually your multicellular organisms. Okay, so when we're talking about the prokaryotic cell, we're talking about more primitive type organisms, meaning these are your first type of organisms that were present at the time of, of the formation of the earth and um, these organisms um, fall underneath the kingdom of Monera um, and sometimes the kingdom is broken into two separate kingdoms it just depends on what book you're looking at um, which is called the eubacteria or the archibacteria and uh, the main thing you could see here within the um, pro the prokaryotes, okay, is that it has just this nucleoid region here that's present. So it doesn't actually have a nucleus that encompasses or encases the DNA. Um, whereas when we're talking about the u the um, eukaryotic cell, you can see here there's a large structure which is called the nucleus, and then inside of it has the nucleoid region. Okay, so when you look at the two cells that's one of the major differences between them. Um, your eukaryotic cells are usually the single-celled organism, okay, and your eukaryotic cells um, are going to uh, be your um, usually your multicellular organisms that are actually working together um, cells are working together to carry out multiple functions within that particular cell. Um, you can see the size differences. Your prokaryotes are, again, typically smaller in fashion compared to your eukaryotic cells. So, um, if you think about it, the compound light microscope that we have used here in class, um, probably did not have enough magnification to look at these prokaryotic cells um, just because they're so much smaller. Now you're able to see a lot of the eukaryotic cells with our compound microscope just because of the size of that. Okay, so um, now moving on to the cell theory. Okay, um, there's three parts or three basic parts to the cell theory that you guys should know. Uh, the first part talks about that all living things are made up of one or more cells. Okay, so anything that's living has at least is considered to be uh, have one cell that cell could, like a prokaryotic cells that single cell organism can carry out all life functions uh, when we're talking about multicellular organisms obviously they work in conjunction with each other in order to accomplish certain tasks uh, the second part of the cell theory that is that cells are the basic units of structure and function in organisms. So these are the building blocks okay, of all organisms, uh, living organisms, are these cell structures. Okay, so that's, that's the second part. And the third part is all cells arise from pre-existing cells. And this is just basically stating that um, cells don't spontaneously show up. Okay, uh, a living organism has to produce another cell um, in order for the cells to be there. They're not just going to all of a sudden, um, you know, the desk isn't going to just show up uh, a another cell. It has to be um, go through a um, the process of reproduction. Okay, and these cell, the cell theory. Um, the importance behind that, um, first off, you know, we we'll talk a bit, a little bit more about that in the next slide after this one, but. Um, some of the scientists that were very instrumental in the development of the cell theory, and you guys have noticed this when you did your cell quest, and also probably when you looked up the mic idea of the microscope, was a gentleman by the name of Robert Hooke, and he did his um, a lot of his work back in the 1600s, and his contribution to the cell theory he um, was that he did his work on cork on, a, on the cork cell which is the plant, you know, obviously from a tree, and it's kind of the dead portion of the plant, okay, or the tree. Um, so it didn't really have any of the um, 
organelles within it but it had the basic outer wall so you could look at them and he named them the cell okay because hook was uh, living in like a monastery when he was doing his work and he basically just said that they looked these compartments that he looked was looking at kind of looked like their uh, rooms that he lived in and at that time they particularly they called them cells um, the second one is brown Okay, and Brown was the first one to observe and uh, name the nucleus. Okay, and which obviously is an important contribution to the idea of cells. Then we had, um, like you saw in your uh, re, uh, your um, cell quest, we had two scientists named Schleiden and Schwann that were very instrumental in the idea of the cell theory and development of it. Uh, the first gentleman here, his name was Schwann, and this is 1800s. He said that all animals, okay, are made up of cells. So he's saying basically that these are the, the basic structure and function that um, you know that all living things have to have these cells in order to be considered living. And uh, another gentleman that he was that he kind of came with the same idea, but his dealt with plants was the um, the name of Schleiden. Okay, so you got to know the differences here. Okay, so we're talking about this. Um, sorry, I'm just changing my pointer options here. Um, so you have Schwann. And then you have, he was looking at the animal cells, and Schleiden was looking at plant cells. One way I kind of remembered it was that Schwann kind of sounds like, like swan, the bird, right? Okay, um, so it goes along with the animals, and that was one way I, I tried to remember the difference between that. Um, and then another gentleman was by the name of Pasture, and he might you might be familiar with his name because of the idea of pasteurization. Um, you know that milk goes through. You know when they get they milk the cow and they go through the process of pasteurization and basically to kill the bacteria that's within it. And he was doing his work with bacteria in the 1860s, and uh, basically he was pr disproving the idea of spontaneous generation. Okay, he showed that you could not, you know, if you killed all this bacteria that were found, um, say in milk or in wherever he was looking at, um, they weren't going to be able to reproduce without it. They weren't just going to randomly show up. Okay, in order to get bacteria, you have to have a source. You got to have bacteria that was already present. Um, so he disproved the idea of spontaneous generation. And another scientist uh, was his, his name was Verkau, and basically Verkau was looking at cells that were going through cellular division or mitosis, and he stated that all cells come from pre-existing cells. So that's something else you should uh, understand. Oops, let me go back here. Went ahead on you. And um, so Verkau observes these cells, okay, and he noticed that they were dividing and uh, multiplying, and that's so one cell had to come from another cell they just didn't show up he kind of backed up the idea of what pasture was talking about um, with his information alright so this uh, slide here just kind of shows you some go over some of the importance of the um, cell theory okay and I'll just kind of restate some of the ideas here a cell is the simplest structural and functional unit of life what that basically means here okay is that when we're talking about the uh, structure and function Okay, we're talking the cell can carry on all life forms depending on what type of organism it is. Okay, and it says here there are no smaller subunits of the cell or organism that it's in themselves are alive. So the cell is a smaller unit, the smallest unit that's considered alive. Uh, the different parts that make up the cell, like all the organelles and atoms and all that stuff, those are are not considered alive. Okay, what they do is they build up the whole entire cell. An organism structure and all the functions are ultimately due to the activity, activities of the cells. Okay, so like for your body, uh, for it to do its normal processes and working and all working together, okay, it's due to the cells that are found within your body. Cells come from only pre-existing cells. Okay, that's the idea. Of the spontaneous generation um, is not right. Okay, all life therefore traces its ancestry back to the same original cell, meaning that eventually, at one time, there was this one cell, uh, which they predict is like an amoeba. Okay, um, and that's where everything traced back to originally. If you, I um, mean, the ideas of the evolution of the theorists that's out there. And then because of the common ancestry, the cells of all species have many fundamental similarities in their chemical composition. So these similarities that we're talking about in this chemical that, uh, composition that we're talking about is 
um, in the idea of DNA. Okay, all organisms, all living organisms have DNA and they all have the same letters, A, G, C, and T. Um, it's just the different combinations and all that's, that they're put together that creates the different type of organism. So we all have, kind of speak the same language, it's just that they're in different order. And uh, then the metabolic processes that occur within our body are very similar amongst organisms. Um, talking about cell size, okay, like I said in the beginning of this that we're going to look at a little bit about cell size, um, and uh, but we're going to actually revisit this idea a couple of times throughout this section. Um, we know cells are small, okay, you can see from this chart up here, you can see the size of a human, you know, you're talking like five feet, six feet, something like that, down to getting to where most plant animal cells are, you know, within the one micrometer to a hundred micrometers, and then you get into the different areas like bacteria and then you get into the different parts that make up the cells um, then you get into the viruses and ribosomes and proteins and these are all things that make up these macromolecules that make up the cell uh, organelles and the cell parts so you can see here also you know the things you can see with your unaided eye the light microscope and your electron microscope so a lot of the bacteria that we would look at or the viruses your compound light microscope is not going to work you're going to have to look use an electron microscope to get that and you can see here the difference here's a normal uh, electron microscope or sorry a, a compound microscope view and then this is a, what we look at with an electron microscope or some viruses um, one of the key ideas that you should get out of the idea of, uh, of the cell is small cells are more efficient. Your cells in your body want they want to be small, okay, um, and they want to have a high surface area to volume. So what we're talking about surface area is this cube here has a certain surface area what what basically touches the outside world, okay. Um, and what they want is a very high surface area, so a lot of uh, area for things to go in and out of the cell, but they want the volume and the stuff inside to be very small. And the smaller this is, the volume inside compared to the ratio of the surface outside, the better, because then they're able to um, you know, expedite things in and out, or however you want to look at it, in or out of the cell. The more efficient the cell is, the better the cell will run. So what the cell wants to do is it wants to be smaller in size um, because it does run more efficiently and so that's why your cells will divide they'll eventually reach this point the cell will need to divide in order for your cells to run more efficiently and it's just the whole idea of exchanging things in and out of the cell so if the volume of the stuff inside gets too big um, the surface area to that volume that's inside isn't at the right ratio and the, and the cell will not run good okay and it will not be able to get the things in and out of the cell that it needs to get out so again we'll revisit this idea of the cell uh, the um, surface area to volume in a lab and designing and looking at the different sizes of cells um, some features that are common to all cells okay you can see here that uh, the prokaryotes and eukaryotic cells we've looked at some of these already uh, some of the different features you will eventually have to know all the different parts and different organelles that are found within the different cells so that way uh, the f structures and functions in order to carry out uh, you know what goes along with the unit okay the prokaryotic cells we're gonna watch some a couple videos in class that deal with the prokaryotic versus eukaryotic cells but again your prokaryotic cells are very simple. Um, we're going to do a little Venn diagram in class and kind of go through the comparison between the prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Um, prokaryotes, a very simple type organism, uh, has a nucleoid region. Uh, they can have a cell wall there, as you can see. They're capsulated, uh, have ribosomes. Um, you know, these are very simple type um, single celled organisms. Uh, they fall underneath the Monera kingdom, which is a eubacteria and archibacteria, in order to do that. Um, and then we talk about our um, prokaryotic cells, or sorry, eukaryotic cells. You can see much more complex. There's a lot more information, or a lot more organelles or structures that carry out functions inside. Um, you can see here is your nucleus. Okay, um, you have this. This is the big difference between a prokaryotic cell and a eukaryotic cell is that the um, the eukaryotes have this big central nucleus that you can see, where it, that carries your DNA and houses the DNA within it, where your prokaryotes don't. And you can look in here. These um, this is a type of cell that is your uh, animal cell. 
okay, um, because of the shape, animal cells versus plant cells. Now they're both eukaryotic cells, but your animal cells are going to be usually typically round in shape or like an oval shape, whereas your prokary or your, sorry your plant cells are always going to be more of a rectangle square shaped. Okay, so this is your animal cell. That's your plant cell. So you can really see the difference between them. Okay, that's one of the major differences, and also it tells you down here in the bottom, whereas your animal cells do not have the chloroplast, the central large vacuole, the cell wall, those are the main things you need to know. Um, when you look at the plant cell, here's your large central vacuole, here's your chloroplast, you see the green that helps carry out photosynthesis, and then this is the cell wall, that actually have your cell wall, and then you have your um, cell membrane. When you looked at the animal cell, all the animal cell has is this cell membrane on the outside, okay, that helps with protecting things that come in and out. We know the cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer, Okay, that allows it's called, it's a semi-permeable membrane that allows certain things in, certain things out. Okay, depending on the size and the uh, structure of it. So again, we'll talk a little bit more about the difference between your plant and animal cell. But the major difference is, is that your plant cell has a cell wall, it has chloroplast, and has this very large central vacuole in the middle. Okay, so um, we'll move on to cell membrane. will be the second part. We're going to be looking at the different organelles um, and parts of the cell and all the different functions they carry out. Um, so, you know, I hope this helps. Go back through it to help it review for your tasks or quizzes. Um, you know, maybe if you're absent, you should review this too. Uh, you know, to get some more notes that you have not gotten in class. So this uh, segment of the, on the unit on cell uh, dealt with the cell cycle. Um, looking at prokaryotes versus eukaryotes, plant cells versus animal cells, and you know why the cell uh, theory was so important. Who are some of the scientists that contributed the information?